15th Committee on Community Resources meeting at 5 o'clock. And I'll note that everyone's present. Um, we have a quorum, and we are being audio and video recorded. I will also note there is no public for public comment. So moving past public comment, we're going to uh, move on to the minutes from our previous meeting, April 13th, 2017. Is there a motion on the minutes? I move approval for minutes. Second. Any discussion, changes? No? All those in favor of approving minutes? Aye. Aye. No, Aye. no abstentions or? Um, okay, so they pass. So moving on to our next item is um, uh, 17.265 in ordinance relative to taxis and vehicles for hire. So this was referred to our committee on April 6th. We discussed it at the last meeting. Um, Officer Allard was here. And it was decided at that meeting that the next step was to have um, Pam, our administrative assistant, rework some of the language and um, work with Solicitor Seawald with some of the, you know, to, to address some of the concerns or the, the things that weren't, didn't really relate to reality and how this could move forward. So um, Pam attached a new copy with Solicitor Seawald. He's the, so all these changes are his work and your work, right? They're, they're the changes from Chief Casper because there was a question that Attorney Seawald had at the last meeting. Um, they're his, they're Attorney Seawald's recommendations and uh, Officer Allard's recommendations and I think that's it. Okay. So how should we proceed? Um, should I read it section by section or would you, would well, you, do you want to tell us like who, who it doesn't say who right. put in which. Who made the changes, right. Changed, because the so. changes came via email mostly. Right. So, um, you know, wouldn't have been able to have different people indicate, you know, who right. made what change. Um, I just want to say that I did send it to the city clerk and the city solicitor. Um, the idea was at the last meeting that they would, you know, provide feedback. That's what the committee had requested. Okay. Um, Attorney Seawald hasn't had a chance to review it. I think the issue is mostly he's been distracted with other, you know, with other things. I thought he made changes to it. Well, he, he made recommendations, okay. um, but then at the last meeting, um, the committee, so he made those recommendations You're prior right. to um, the last meeting. Okay. And then I incorporated his recommendations into this. Um, and then the committee had asked that I review this with the uh, city clerk and the city solicitor to be sure that it would fit both livery and taxes. Right. Now, because it was this committee's objective that this document should cover livery and taxi cabs. Right. Um, so he hasn't had a chance to do that okay. as of yet, um, but I think, you know, if the committee wanted to move forward with this, his review could always take place with legislative matters. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's really up to you guys, you know, how you want to handle that. Okay. Um, it, it seems like a lot of it's changed. Should we read it? Yes, uh, just before we get into that, just yeah. in terms of the sequence of events, so, so did you get any comment back from the city clerk subsequent to the last no, time we met? No, uh, to be fair though, I just sent this to them late last week, okay. it was either Thursday or Friday, so it could be that they, that neither one, I, I'm, it was either Wednesday or Thursday, it could be that they haven't had a chance to review it okay. as of yet, so. I mean, I noticed there's a lot, some of the, there's language that's changed in it that pertains to our committee in that we are now the ones who would, um, people would come to if they had been denied a permit and <coughs> wanted to appeal it. Um, so I wonder. Can I just ask one, uh, yeah. one, one additional sure. question? So 
in, in addition to incorporating uh, Solicitor Seawald's suggestions, did, did, because you at the, at the last meeting, it was clear you knew more about this, had more background this mm -hmm. than any of us. Does this now make sense to you? Is this, is, is, do you think this is more or less in the shape that it should be? I think it would, it will serve the dual purpose for, to meet both taxi cab and um, livery service um, vehicles. Remember, there was also that concern that the, the previous um, version of the document um, was not used to uh, govern liveries at all. Right. So, you know, based on the discussion that this committee had, I went back and tried to m make sure that all of the components relative to livery were spelled out in each one of these individual sections, um, just to be sure that, you know, if we move forward. Can I ask you, um, I know we talked, <clears throat> we talked about the section, and I know that there's a lot of reference to the Committee on Community Resources, but I didn't think that that was what, because uh, originally the appeal process goes with the police chief to what was formerly the Committee on Public Safety, which is now Committee of City Services. So um, I'm wondering, I think that that might just be, I'm a, I don't think we intended that the appeal process... Why is it coming here and not City here. Services? Pardon me? Why is it coming here and not City Services? Yeah, I think, that, I think given that the successor of the Public Safety Committee is the City Services Committee, and, and what it is, it's an appeal that has the police chief. I, I've been, when I was on Public Safety, we had appeals, and the police chief would come, and because that committee, you know, deals with public police and fire and many other departments. So I'm not sure whether we have, I can't remember if we talked about it being more relevant to come here because well, of, or, I mean, because you do well, license. Because we have license, licensing falls okay. under us. So then, yeah, then that makes sense. Why. I, you know, I could go back and look and see what I had put in the minutes, but to be perfectly honest, I did have city services there first, and then I was like, well, wait a minute, this is the committee that does yeah. licensing. Right, it's less of like a public okay. safety and, yeah. and more of a licensing. Say that again? Because it's less of a public safety issue and more of a licensing issue. Well, the appeals that happened in, in the past, maybe there's only one or two that I remember, were issues where the, the chief objected for matters of public safety to a particular. Do you remember it? Mm -hmm. This? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a few years ago. Well, it can, you know, I can always put in city services if that's, you know, what the, what the committee would want. I wonder if they need to review it at some point, too, though, because of that. <coughs> well, that was sort of my next question, which is that it, should we wait on this so that the solicitor can look at it? My concern is that he'll look at it, he'll change some things that actually pertain to us, and we, it will have passed out of us at that point, and we won't have a so they're not in a big hurry. I mean, they're, they're not. There is no hurry. I guess the city council, the city council just has in their rules, you know, right. within a certain amount of time. So we may be out of that time if we hold off another month. Uh, I mean, you know, I can't imagine that the legislative matters committee would take issue with it though. Right. It, the goal was that it was to get it correct, and you know, it really is not going to be much of an issue before. Does Next anyone year. here sit on ledge? Me. So you could be our liaison too if yeah. there are particular questions that they have or things that come up that you know were changed. Or Certainly. Yeah. And the interesting thing about this is that you remember Officer Albert had talked about the fact that there were two businesses in town, uh -huh. one of which was had those livery plates. Well, my understanding is they're closing and moving to another community that will accept the livery plate. Wow. Wow. So. Okay. So it doesn't, you know. It well, and also the licenses right. come. They, they. This all happened May first, right? Um, May first is the date that they get reissued. And you've, are, you guys have already, we already reissued them. Yeah. Right. So yeah. there's yeah. not a time pressure. We have it. Right. 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 year right. until it comes up again. Yeah. 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 Okay. Does anyone have um, any? Does anyone prefer not to hold this for next month? Continue it to next month. 
No, I would just ask in the meantime if there's any way we could get some clarification. I don't know whether it would it would really be in the council rules or some understanding about which committee the appeal process should go through. Should it come to community resources or city services? And I don't or maybe just a, a question to you know the council president as mm -hmm. for an opinion what he thinks. I can also query the chief too if you think that that might yeah. help. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know if the if the solicitor has any would have any reason to have an opinion on that based on what our rules say. We're the proper place to do it. Um, let's ask everybody. This is where the um, I'm just being a baby here by saying this, but this is where this arbitrariness of city services versus city resources comes into play that I kept kind of like yeah. querying when we first passed the new rules. It's, right. It's kind of well, ambiguous. The and city services committee just kind of pulls together three former three former committees, public safety, social services and veterans affairs, and appointments. That's, appointments was its own committee. But see, too, even that's right. inaccurate because SSVCR, the social services, a lot of the Culture stuff are and right. arts and Oh, well, that's true. That, 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 that got cut so There's no clear divide, and I think we're just right. figuring it out as we go. Right. And, this is a perfect example of how it's not clear and we're right. that's not clear from there really. Okay, so do we need a motion to continue this? Yes. So moved. Second. Uh, any further discussion on this on the motion? No? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we are gonna address that again in June. Um Okay, so moving forward, we are continuing our discussion on the op-eds uh, pertaining to the committee study request. Can I make a suggestion sure. to, about uh, the reordering of our agenda? Yeah, sure. If we could uh, move up items six and seven, since that they bear directly on the content of, sure. you want to do the, six first? of, of the op-ed piece. Sure. Okay, so that makes sense. we'll move on to item six, which is update on the mayor's quote panhandling advisory group from Councilor Bidwell. Um. Yeah. So we so we met a the the, 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 the group met a met a, a second time and uh, continues to have uh, really really good participation you had asked me before why don't I just tick through who, who you know the members of our of this little advisory group besides the mayor and the police chief and myself um, a representative of ServiceNet Sue Stubbs was there this last week Jay Levy uh, from uh, Department of Mental Health and Elliott Community Homeless Services uh, Todd Weir who is uh, of course, the senior pastor at First Churches, but he's also on the housing partnership. He's on the board of Friends of Hampshire County uh, Homeless. Um, Sherry Sullivan, who's Hampshire Hope Coalition Director. Alan Wolf, uh, local business guy representing the downtown Northampton Association. Bud Stockwell, um, the longtime owner of Cornucopia, who is the Chamber of Commerce representative. Uh, Jill Shanahan representing Tapestry Health uh, and Peg Keller of course the city's uh, housing to redevelopment planner who uh, has, has uh, facilitated the, uh, the meetings so it's pretty it's a pretty to, to my way of thinking it's pretty representative uh, uh, good good working group the topic of this last meeting was to just try, um, that, uh, folks who had data um, were asked to uh, come to the meeting with whatever data they had that could help us kind of get a handle on the nature of the population of folks on the, on the, on the, on the streets. And uh, Chief Casper, uh, had data just from the standpoint of, of arrest records um, and, and, and she and she summarized that Jay Levy from the Department of Mental Health had 
uh, information uh, on basically the caseload of Brendan, the, uh, the, the caseworker who works, works downtown. Um, Sue Stubbs from ServiceNet uh, had uh, information on the roughly 200 a year or so folks who, uh, who are in uh, the Interfaith Cot Shelter and the Grove Street Shelter. So she kind of reported on her observations uh, about that. So we, we, we you know, we, we, we have, it, it helped to, 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 to kind of get a handle on it. And I'm, I'm not as prepared as I should be for you today with, well, what does it all mean? I mean we're all kind of processing it, but certainly one of the, the takeaways was that it's, it's, and we all know this, but the data really showed it, that it's a big mistake to, a, to conflate somehow the, uh, the homeless population and the panhandle population. In fact, there's there there there's 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 relatively there's relatively little overlap in it, and there's relatively little overlap between those folks who are in the cot shelter, uh, in the interface shelter, and, and in Grove Street, and uh, what is believed to be um, the, the so-called handling population. The um, you know, there was there was there was some 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 uh, attempt to, to, to try and okay if, if on any given day you've got ten folks on the on the on on on, on the streets downtown, um, a certain number maybe forty percent are uh, from Grove Street or, or less. No, I, I take it back. Of the panhandlers on any given day, not, you know, folks are actively out there soliciting. Maybe four of them would be from Grove Street. Maybe, maybe four of them from the Interfaith Shelter. Maybe two of them are um, just just on the streets in some in, in, in some other way. Um, and the culture, increasingly in the in the shelters, is to really discourage folks, and it's increasingly kind of the ethic within the shelters to 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 not panhandle, to um, to, to just not out not be out there they're they're doing that but of those who are um, most times what they are using the money for is drugs and cigarettes and alcohol but then there's a whole other group on the streets some of whom are are, are, are trying to make rent by asking for money and then there is a certainly a quantifiable number of folks who uh, appear not to be homeless at all, and appear not to be from Northampton, but are coming into town, uh, recognizing that there uh, is uh, uh, folks folks uh, quite quite willing to, 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 to support their solicitation. So it it's a really it's 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 not a straightforward population. It's not a straightforward uh, issue in terms of how best to address it. The feeling of this group is that we are unusually um, uh, fortunate to have a, a wide range of fairly resourced services available. Um, uh, and that there are a number of people for whom it isn't a question of outreach and education. They just, they just refuse to take advantage of services. We've all heard reports of that. Um, there is growing concern about uh, a rougher crowd coming in from 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 out of town that is a little more aggressive and definitely not local. Um, uh, and in some cases, it's associated with uh, folks wanting to just take advantage of the goodwill of Northampton. In some cases, it's folks here who are here because of the increasing activity of. of Drug dealing downtown, as as the, as the I ninety one corridor continues to bring uh, drugs and people associated with them further further north. So it's um, a good portion of our last meeting was devoted to just just gather, getting that data and leaving it all for folks to to chew on. 
and we we concluded with um, folks talking about different models that are out there and we were to come to our next meeting with everybody having looked into um, some of the alternative models that are out there there continues to be total agreement that uh, anything we talk about has to be non-ordinance non-regulatory total voluntary um, so there there's there's some folks looking at uh, I believe the the Burlington Vermont experience and what they've done I said I would look further into the, the New Haven program that they call um, give change to make change uh, there are various other models out there some of which have been largely discredited but nevertheless <coughs> sort of bring them to the bring them to the table for the for, for the next conversation so that's that's the that's the the rundown um, and I don't think anybody is coming into this with preconceived notions as to uh, uh, what's to be done I think there is there's agreement that Northampton should be proud of being a compassionate community uh, and that there are a variety of ways that can, a community can show its, 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 its compassion and, and while addressing issues that um, increasing numbers of people report are, are troublesome just from a sort of a comfort level and increasingly confrontational point of view on the streets. Did that last point come from Chief Casper's data? Yes. Anecdotes and 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 data of of the um, of the uh, let's see of the calls that came to the police specifically related to panhandling. Um, the, the most widespread uh, complaint was, 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 was harassing behavior, and that covers an enormous range of behaviors, but that's just how it got recorded, followed by uh, blocking entrances to stores and blocking uh, the sidewalk. Um, also, they get calls from folks generally worried about the welfare of, of these of these people. Um, in some cases, the calls were about disturbance between panhandlers. And some, as there are increasing numbers of couples um, uh, on the street, there were there were clearly some domestic situations um, spilling over into the into the streets, uh, smoking too close to a store. Uh, feeling harassed uh, at an ATM uh, were, were all the kinds of uh, reports that came from the, from, the, from the police records. And if if almost everyone is aware of the services that are available, was there any, did anyone know sort of what percentage of people um, who are on the street or panhandling take advantage of those services, if they're all aware of them? So I guess like, what percentage don't ch choose not to take I don't know that anyone's got a got a percentage on that, but 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 there's 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 uh, of course one, you know once once the uh, once the FA shelter shuts down for the year, we will we we it'll it'll, it'll change. But but right now there's there's a sense that the shelters uh, through their through their outreach and their capacity are. Are, are reaching a lot of folks and providing uh, a lot of good, a lot of good, good services. Uh, and those are the folks, obviously, who want to take advantage. Um, what you know, the, the 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 number of folks who clearly are aware of the availability of services and are choosing to not take advantage of them. I don't, I don't, I can't put a number on it, but it's a, it's certainly a component of what's. So. <clears throat> At the no. No, please. Uh, no, I, I was just. Um, it sounds as though um, 
the data is, I mean, what, what we don't have really is anything directly from people on the streets in the form of uh, surveys even or, or involvement. I mean, I know it's kind of hard, but you would think that there might be a way to include one or two people onto the advisory board from the community, I mean, from the street population, even if it were rotating to just kind of well, we talk we talk about that, and, and, and Peg is is working on a plan to with I'm not sure if it's with Brendan, but 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 to actually in a in a somewhat structured way interview people uh, to, to address that, that 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 very point is that there's a lot of folks around the table who think they have a pretty good handle on what's going on out there, but uh, that's not the same thing as having directly asked. So, but so to Councilor Carney's other point, what about having someone actually on the advisory? And would, the, would there be panhandlers welcome? Or was it discussed? Would they, right, well, I mean, you know, I mean, because it, in some ways there's an underlying, even though we're talking about not having ordinance or regulatory ways to approach, what we are, there's an underlying premise that we have a problem with panhandling in the city. And so that's the part there, you know, maybe maybe some panhandlers themselves would disagree or they would not consider themselves to be a problem or a detriment to the fabric of the city. So, I mean, there's, and we know that it's such an explosive issue that it wouldn't just be, I mean, there's a, a lot of people who really bristle at the, um, at the civil liberties issues that, you know, are, are clearly there when, people's, you know, there is kind of a, e e e even as you were saying about this ethic in the, um, in the shelter, um, I'm not sure, you know, there's somehow, there's a culture of, there's a clash here of whether, or whether it's okay to panhandle, even though it's legal. And this is what we dealt with a few years ago when folks said, well, there ought to be a law, but it's, you know, find, we know that we can't do that, and for many people, feel like we fundamentally should not. So, I don't know. I mean, I, I just feel like having um, having that represented in some way, the population themselves. I mean, we know there's a the guy who hangs out here on the corner. You know, he's somebody who's very regular, steady. He's been there for a few years, right? I mean, he's right next to City Hall. You would think maybe he could reach out to, and he's a panhandler. He's he clearly a panhandler. He goes to council meetings. Right. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking <clears throat> someone else. Um, but there's a way to there's a way to at least get that, you know, bring that viewpoint into the room if it's an, if it's an if it's specifically called the panhandling advisory. I'd say from the panhandling population, not just yeah, because mm -hmm. we're you know this isn't dealing specifically with all, of, uh, with the way it's called is the mayor's panhandling advisory group, not at-risk population. It's, it's really about the panhandling. Right. Well, wh how about if, you know, I, I'd be glad to take to the mayor the, the, the recommendation that, because he, he was very deliberative and wanted it, you know, to be very much his, mm -hmm. his group, um, but, but I'd be, you know, why don't, I, why, don't I, why don't I tell him that there's been a recommendation that um, there I mean, should I'm be representation on the task force of, of, yeah. of one, or, one or more of the folks who you know, are in who fact are being on the streets. discussed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With a follow-up recommendation from our first sure. recommendations. Why don't I, why don't I, why don't I okay. make, pass along a recommendation of that? I'm wondering if there's any kind of um, descriptor of what this group is or what the goals of the group are or anything like that, if anything's been written up or even just stated. Because the, I mean, the impression I'm getting, it sounds like you, know, you were trying to collect data and research, but it seems to me that on some level there is 
an ultimate goal of reducing panhandling in Northampton, and if that's the case, I think um, it needs to be made explicit. And I feel like we need to um, have people in the city know that this is going on, so it's not just a kind of behind closed doors task force that nobody knows about that's kind of coming up with ideas and recommendations and sharing data without <coughs> there being kind of a little bit more public knowledge and scrutiny of the process. Um, I think it could be really um, kind of be a, a trust breaking kind of practice if this group comes up with particular recommendations when people in Northampton didn't know that it was happening in the first place. I'm also curious about where members of the task force, um, kind of their motivation for being part of it. You know, is the vast majority of folks that are on it, um, are they folks that see panhandling as an issue that needs to be taken care of and we need to reduce the numbers of people on the streets? If that's the case, it feels really problematic to me because it's clearly weighted in a very particular direction around trying to reduce panhandling and um, associated with criminal behaviors and it, they're just there's so many to me there's so many kind of um, social and ethical issues related to this the way that it's being shared here yeah I don't I, 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 I don't I don't see any any I certainly do not see that particular bias or preconception. There, the, 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 the social service folks, uh, and, and Sue Stubbs, I don't think would mind me speaking for her, she has become convinced that uh, providing dollars um, directly to, to, to panhandlers is in most instances, problematic and does not help the population that she wants to serve, and that she and, the, and, and, and that she is serving. Uh, the the DMH representative is is there with the motivation of wanting to be sure that the best possible services are being provided to his caseload. Um, I guess I've been kind of impressed with the fact that I would say one common um, ingredient in what everybody has had to say is that there is a there there is a desire to to distinguish between folks in need of services and who are worthy of the community's compassion and assistance. However, we uh, in the variety of forms in which we express it. And there are folks who totally legally, totally within their rights, who are nevertheless kind of gaming the system by, 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 by coming into town representing themselves uh, as either a veteran when they're not or as homeless when they're not um, uh, or expecting a child when they're not. And it, they're, they're totally within their rights to do so. But there's a sense that, that they are kind of gaming the system and are here just to take advantage of the goodwill of people who want to support the folks who really need. So figure, figuring that out, and, and is, is, there, is there a way to, to, to really focus the community's compassion and services and dollars on, on, on truly um, needy and at-risk populations, uh, as as opposed to the folks that are that are kind of gaming the system, uh, I think there's a desire to try and figure out is there is there a way to do that, and how have other communities dealt with that? I'd say um, rich white men and corporations are gaming the system a lot more than folks are saying that they have a baby on the way that might not. So I don't know. I, I take offense at the concept of them giving the system. I mean, who is it really harming? So anyway, this is you know we're getting into territory that is clearly just a 
I have a very different um, feeling about this, and I'm I am concerned about the framing of uh, the folks who we're talking about here. So I don't know what else I can say that you know isn't just going to get into. I'm already very emotional, as you can tell, as I was last time we talked about this. I mean, I think part of the challenge is that, uh, and it's absolutely his right to do this, but the suggestion that we made was framed differently than how this advisory group was. I mean, just by the virtue of its name was not how we presented our recommendation. So sort of off the bat, it's uh, there's sort of a, a yeah, and, and so, I mean, we made a recommendation and, you know, what we are partnered at this point, I mean, obviously, Councillor Bidwell is, is a part of this group, um, but in terms of us as a committee as a whole, is not, you know, we're not necessarily involved. So, I guess my point is, um, if, if the committee as a whole or parts of the committee want to distance themselves or not be party to it, I think that that's fine. It's not something that we have to oversee in any way, right? I, I still take your point that it sounds like, and I agree, it would be nice if there was more transparency about what this group is, its purpose, what it, you know, the members, its objective. But is that our committee's responsibility in any way or something that we have to be a part of? I'm not sure who it is. Well, it's just that it appears on our agenda as part of this you know, committee's uh, continued ongoing discussion, it seems. Mm -hmm. um, although, uh, uh, Councilor Bridwell, you said that we were actually talking about six and seven as a precursor to do set the context for that. Okay. Okay. Right. So. Um. Well, a couple of a couple of things. One one is that it's true. We 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 were very careful in the language of our recommendation, and that language is not reflected in the name the mayor chose to give to the to give to the group. Notwithstanding that, I do find that uh, the makeup of that group and the discussion of the group is fully um, tuned into uh, you know, addressing the needs of the various at-risk populations downtown. So that didn't make it into the title of the, the group as the mayor titled it, but uh, I, I, I don't find that sentiment at all lacking around the table. Um, the other point is that may, maybe in terms of the transparency issue, maybe um, we, we, we could always ask the mayor or Peg Keller to come and provide their debrief of, of, of or progress report to this to this committee. Um, uh, I, I am a bit sympathetic to the, the, the mayor's desire to, given that it has been such a political hot button, to to uh, keep it a little bit, um, at least at least it's from for some initial conversations, to to uh, uh, have it the, the sort of group that. Uh, is able to talk openly and frankly with with with, with one another without, um, you know, without a reporter in the room or, or you know any, any anything like that. I am I am sympathetic to sometimes uh, a working group uh, can can work well at least at least initially uh, if it's if if it's just a just a group that goes goes public with what with you know with its uh, conclusions later. Now, I don't I'm, I don't pretend to be speaking on the mayor's behalf, but I, but I know it's been his desire to to, to, to keep it just a, an internal um, quiet group, initial, at least initially. But if if this committee would would 
like to have it brought more out in the open by asking him to bring his to, 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 to bring a summary or bring a report here. We could always do that. Um, and it sounds like Councilor Klein, you were may, maybe not so much for us, but for the larger population of the city. So whether bringing it to us would then get it out, <laughs> you know, is unclear. But um, but it does. It would fall under what we do to ask to have that happen. If, if that was decided. Well, it does relate to. I mean, I'm glad that we talked about this before we talked about the, um, I mean, it might have led to it anyway if we'd started with the letter, but um, for me, you know, I, as I read and reread the letter, the next stop ed that is, um, it felt really clear to me that I um, don't want to be associated with this piece of work and that I don't see it as an issue and I, um, you know, panhandling per se as an issue, and that I think that it kind of behooves us in the body of the op ed to say that there was division um, amongst committee members about whether or not, you know, we wanted to address this issue because um, it's really important to me, it's a very deep value of mine that I don't want misrepresented. So anyway, that, that I don't need to move us prematurely onto that, but, but I do think that that's very relevant to this conversation that we're having here. Any other, any other thoughts on item six, this update on the advisory group? Well, just to summarize, the, the, I will take to the mayor if, if it's a sense of this group uh, that he consider inviting someone from the from the streets, panhandler or not, to to, to well, it should be a panhandler because it's the advisory board on panhandling. I mean, it really should. We're talking about specifics. So, and then what what troubles me about this is there's been a lot of distinction made between who's okay, it's all right if they're asking, and those people deserve our compassion. But, there, I mean, there's kind of a pre, the, the judgment of a number of things. Coming from out of town, not, I mean. Uh, using alcohol, using the money for you, alcohol or drugs. Or, yeah, using, the, or those things there are, uh, well, they're coming from out of town. I mean, it, I, don't know, I mean, a lot of people come from out of town to work, you know, I can't, uh, and I don't know. Um, there are there are some issues there, and so uh, I don't know where I was going with that. But um, you should at least, there should at least be some representation from the panhandling population, and, and there are plenty of uh, known people who have, who are regular and fall in the category of you know misrepresentation or something because of what their sign says. You know, everybody knows you know like, like these guys not really homeless, people say he really does have a room somewhere. But then, you know, I mean, it, it, it just, you know, it raises to the surface the, cons the kind of conflict that's there that people have with the notion of panhandling itself anyway. For some people, it's a real problem. For some people, there's no, no type of panhandling that's really acceptable. For some, it's okay if you really need it, and then, but if you're asking and you're not really in need, then somehow, even though it's not illegal, it's wrong. And we have this, you know, and then there are, we ought to do something about it to stop it. We ought to curb it, we ought to limit it somehow. And that's the conflict that's been running in this community for years, among those who feel like we really need to address this problem head on and those who feel like there are legal ways to already there are legal ways to deal with aggressive pan, you know hostile approaching blocking the sidewalks blocking doorways all those things are within the um, police's right now they do that do that anyway 
So, I, I, I know that's still on item six, but. No, I, I would concur that I think since the title is, pan, is the Panhandling Advisory uh, Group, that it, if you're inviting someone to be on it, it should be someone who right. actually panhandles. Right. But also, as to your point that um, it, it is a group that is interested in helping at-risk communities, you know, people who are not just panhandling, but other at-risk people who don't panhandle, um, it would certainly be great to have more than one person invited who represents sort of different, different communities downtown of these more at-risk populations. Mm -hmm. um, I really appreciate your bringing up the idea, Counselor, that um, somebody be on the committee who um, is, a, is actively engaged in panhandling. And just to kind of um, give it a, a finer um, explication, you know, imagine if the, the mayor created a task force on, you know, transgender folks and nobody transgender was asked to be there as a voice. Um, I mean, it's unthinkable. And so I think it's already indicative of how we marginalize folks who do things like panhandle and don't imagine that they have, you know, anything legitimate to say or share. So I really want to um, encourage this idea. And also to say, though, that I would be really worried about putting that person, if that person is the one person representing panhandlers, in a situation where they don't feel empowered and they feel you know, like they're being the token, whatever. And so there are a lot of people doing advocacy for poor and homeless folks. I know that Reverend Weir is there, and he's done a lot of that really important work. I imagine that the DMH guy, I don't know him personally, is and other folks are concerned, but I think that it's important to have on that committee someone who can also support that person who is a panhandler that we, I hope would be invited on, um, people that do advocacy, very proactive advocacy around people who are living on the streets, people who are panhandling, so that that person doesn't become kind of a, a token that um, you know alone is the voice for his experience, his or her experience, I think that's problematic. Um, there's one more thing that I wanted to say, but I can't remember what it was. So I'm done. Thank you very much, Councilor Pickle, for um, sharing those thoughts and bringing that message. Thank you. And for, and for being part of this group and for uh, I know it's not easy. Um, okay, if there's nothing more on six, should we move to number seven, summary of what's going on in the area of arts and events? And then that will lead us back to five. And um, I, would, I would defer to Councilor Klein if you have uh, something to report based on your conversations. Yep, I, um, I really apologize. I'm not gonna be able to do a good job of it because I did have a very long meeting with Brian Foote from the Arts Council um, last week to kind of feel out the idea with him of whether or not we wanted to, They he would imagine us doing some kind of summit or the all day meeting that we talked about or some kind of convening. Um, and we talked about a whole range of topics and I had a notebook, I didn't, do it with my laptop and I left and I went to work this morning and forgot to bring the notebook with me so I had it here today. So I don't have my notes and I have so much in my mind that I am not going to be able to kind of cherry pick that conversation very well to share with you. But um, one of the main gist is something that we'd already heard I think from you, Councilor Bidwell, that um, Brian is not interested in us, the City Council, this committee, um, you know, helping to sponsor or convene a group. He feels like there are adequate, and we have heard this, so I know I'm repeating it, but I'm, it's part of, the, part, part of what he shared with me. Um, he, he said they have so many forums in which they all get together, all the folks that are involved um, in the arts, that, that it wouldn't be useful. And the main piece that he says, you know, I asked him 
very explicitly several times in the conversation, you know, what do you want, what could you imagine the city council being helpful to you in doing? And he said over and over again, advocacy. He needs, he feels like the arts in Northampton need advocacy at the state level for funding, for support, to let go of the bond um, that uh, is allowing the Center for the Arts to be built. Um, there is something called Mass Creative that almost every day the director, Matt Wilson, puts out a, a blast of what you can do to support the arts in the state, the advocacy kind of level at the governmental level. He asks that all counselors subscribe to that um, and take very seriously what the kind of marching orders are that they're putting out every day. Um, and that we do everything we can to liaise with our representatives at the State House um, to make sure that there's adequate funding for the arts and support for the arts at that level. So he felt like that's kind of like the purview of us as elected officials and that that's the way that we can serve the best purpose. There, he had a bunch of other kind of <clears throat> more content-y kinds of pieces. Um, one of the things that I kind of just remember because it was striking to me something I'd never thought about was he feels like clearly in the city there's a huge gap for 20-somethings. He said, you know, the 30-somethings and the 40-somethings have arts venues that they go to <coughs> that are kind of more established, but we're losing a whole swath of people um, in the 20-something range and the young 30 range because we don't have venues that create the kinds of arts events that they're interested in, whether it be music or visual arts. And with all of the, the nightclubs or whatever they're called now going away and um, many of the bars having closed, um, he said there's very little place for kind of spontaneous events to happen, people to listen to music when they're in their 20s, um, and that that's a really serious issue in the city. Um, he said that one of the things that he felt like could really help to create that is that the city needs to figure out policy-wise how to embrace marijuana. And because it's it's a drug that's now legal in the state, um, it's he, I'm you know, sharing with you the way that he shared these things with me, it's um, safer than alcohol. It's a way in which 20-somethings come together, are pulled together. It's the way that they experience the arts sometimes. And that if we continue as a city to be um, resistant to embracing marijuana, we will lose a whole swath of our population and the arts piece that goes with it. So those are just things that come to mind from my conversation with him. Um, I'll have to, at the next meeting, if we can put this on the agenda for the next meeting, I'll bring my notes and I'll be able to be more specific. Um, he's happy to be invited here. Um, I didn't have a chance to be in touch with um, other folks from the Arts Trust or the uh, Center for the Arts, but I'm going to do that between meetings. So that's my um, Would you... Would you prefer that we hold off inviting him here for so that next next month you could maybe relay a little bit more about what your conversation was with him and um, maybe other people and then think about uh, maybe, maybe July or September um, him come in? Maybe it makes sense for us to not do a summit per se, but to do something like invite <clears throat> a few of these different kind of representative folks in from some of the main arts organizations and. Maybe we could just have an organic conversation with them, you know, whether it be someone from the APE Gallery, someone from the Center for the Arts, someone from the Arts Trust, Brian. Um, have them come in at once, you mean? Maybe, or, or something, something along those lines. I feel like that just would be interesting to have more people. Yeah. I feel like SSBCR, people would come in one at a time, but nothing really yeah. moved from that. But having a conversation with various, mm -hmm. you know, a bunch of people. Well, maybe not a summit, it's still interesting to hear what they have to say in conjunction with each other. Which isn't dissimilar from what we had talked about. I mean, it kind of, sure. you know, we decided, sure. well, it's not our place to do it, we should ask the mayor to do it. Right. And now we're kind of back to, well, maybe we just ask, ask some folks to come and talk to our, yeah. to our community. Uh, well, otherwise, I feel like I end up being this kind of liaison of misrepresenting I, things or I, representing the really, so. Was there any 
part of the, uh, I, I guess it was the mayor mentioned it, I believe Suzanne Beck at the chamber mentioned it, that the Paradise City Cultural Council mm -hmm. was, was. The, the was, district, you mean the arts? Yes, the cultural or, district. or cultural district yeah. rather, was, was, was in fact as, as close as yeah. there was to already being this kind of umbrella group and that they, there was some Funded plan for them to do some kind of larger comprehensive yeah. arts. Thank you for plan. reminding me about that piece because that is exactly what he said: is that yeah. that's become the mechanism by which yeah. all of the different arts organizations come together. And he said, and I remember this: they haven't had a meeting in a while, but he has invited counselors regularly to those meetings. And he said, you know, if you want to come to something that already exists, I would really encourage counselors to come to those meetings because it's that opportunity for everyone who's working on the arts in town to come together and sit together. It's, you know, the DNA, the chamber, all those arts mm -hmm. groups that we just mentioned with Brian. And he would love it if counselors got more engaged because he feels like that would give us more um, ability to kind of do the advocacy that he feels like he'd like us to do. So thanks for reminding me about that. It's interesting that he, he was much more focused, or he felt that our place was much more as sort of ambassadors to the state, you know, to Boston then within work within the city. Definitely. Which is generally not something that we do. I mean we may we may do it individually for certain things, but as a body we don't resolutions. resolutions yeah. I mean I think part of what came up and I don't want to kind of put the wrong spin on this is that he um, he said, you know, we do so much with a staff of, he's just been bumped up to 35 hours a week, so full time. Um, Steve Sanderson was working 10 hours, then they got funding for 15 hours, and now they're, they just bumped him up also, I think, to 35. Part of that money comes from the Arts, Arts Inc., which is the nonprofit that helps to support the Arts Council, so it's not the city. The city only pays his salary. Steve Sanderson's salary is paid by Arts Inc. Um, and then they're hiring somebody for 10 hours a week that's just starting this week or something like that to do some of the promotion mm -hmm. of events. And he said with a staff of up until now, one and a half people, barely, they, you know, he has an arts calendar and that's something too that if counselors are interested, he can put you onto the Google Docs to see, he sent it to me. It's remarkable, it's like every month there are, you know, eight things happening that that office oversees and that he works in collaboration with other arts, arts organizations on. And it's really impressive and he's really hardworking. You know, he said like many of our city staff works, you know, 60, 70 hours a week and to get things done. And so there, there was something, I think he felt like a little bit um, ludicrous in the idea that we could, you know, help to promote things. He said, he actually said, you know, the city council doesn't very do very well with its own publicity, you know, getting people to its own events. So I don't know if you guys are going to be experts or are going to help us. Right, the point well taken. So I don't, I, I don't think that he um, thinks we have the skills that are really going to help with the events as much as the expertise that we have as politicians, you know, as elected officials. And that's why he was thinking, you know, we could liaise with the state house and figure out how to do that kind of stuff. The, the Google Calendar, is that like a public talk? Like, could we give that out to our lists and let everybody see it? Or is it more of an internal talk? I, that's a good question. I don't know. But if you're interested, you could send him a quick email and just ask to be added to it and ask him if it's something to be shared. It's just, it really is just a, a list, you know, yeah. every month with all the different events. So I feel like so. that's, I, I think we heard that during our public forums. I know I've heard it many times. And I, it's people are always looking for just a, general calendar where you're going to find everything going on and you know like different publications do some but something truly comprehensive yeah and well that, 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 that that's quite true i i i i, I hear that too right that, and, and 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 i know too because i'm in the middle of planning events for my one of my daughter's wedding in three weeks and to to, to find out what's at the iron horse what's uh happening as as, as part of city-sponsored events or at the parlor. You, you, you have to go to all these different sources, and I'm not aware that it's all pulled together in one spot. And, and, I, and, and I, I, I don't think we ever represented that we were in position to promote arts events. <laughs> I think what the spirit of what we were saying was that 
we do get feedback that, that maybe there could be a more consolidated approach to promotion uh, and a, you know a master calendar for, 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 for scheduling and and some overall strategic plan for how to promote the different pieces of, of arts and events programming. And I think they talk about, I, I actually went to one of the Paradise City Cultural District meetings, and this was now <coughs> quite a while ago, and that was like the main topic of conversation was how could we all come together and do something like this. And so I'm at the Northampton Arts Council website, and there is, um, button called events and you can scroll down it and see a lot. I don't I think they probably keep it updated and they only go like a month or two forward, right. but yeah, there's definitely a whole long thing here. And does it have like does it have Iron Horse entertainment group stuff? Right. So yeah. Yeah, it's just the things that the arts comes with right. so, right. which is amazing in a huge wealth of stuff, but I do want to point out that I know that we're, we're talking about a digital age here, but there is quite a quite a calendar a listing of things that happen in the newspaper. That's <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's, it's, it's true. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it is. Galleries. And I know. They, they, they do. Part, yeah. But even that, I'm often in, in conversations or meetings where people are saying, I put it, you know, I sent it into the paper, but they didn't print it. So there's no real comprehensive, and maybe it's just you have sort of competing interests, so it's never going to be entirely. But. There are resources here, and they have links to like everything from the academy to the Anchor House, Anchor House artists to right. APE. I mean, so you, there are the links, but right. yeah, you have to go for it. Right. Right. Okay. Just in, in the nature of throwing out ideas and tying together a few pieces. One of the things that we heard from um, Craig Stevens of Landscape when he came to our City Services Committee, this was in the, in the context of uh, the opioid uh, crisis, uh, was that, and, and, and he's the guy who runs this landscaping service that totally employs folks in recovery. And is it called again? Landscapes. And, and he's he's uh, sponsoring Thursday night at the Academy. This show, this show that I've been anyway, he's a, he's a re re quite remarkable guy. But he pointed out that one of the problems, from his point of view, is that there 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 just aren't many quote sober arts events in town. That that uh, you know for 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 a, a population in recovery that wants a social life and wants to convene and do things, every place you go, there's booze. Right. And as we get and as you know, we get to the point where there's also gonna be marijuana just going around. You know, he's a he used and he used to run put together as part of Harrison House his own sober dances. Just so the population that he's working with actually has a place where they can get together and socialize and have a great time yeah. without a bar over in the corner. Right. Right. Um, so yeah, even one more. Night out events often have wine and cheese. Oh yeah, wine, wine and cheese is just kind of a staple at, right. a, at, a, at, a, at, a, at an arts event. And and even I think the uh, the music on the courthouse series. Mm -hmm. I think I think I think they had a vendor there certain. Oh really? No. Popsicles. No, I guess they wouldn't. Have. I guess they wouldn't. Have. No, no they wouldn't. They wouldn't. Have been no. no, they wouldn't. Have been. But so I thought that was a good in the mix of programs. Which is why it would be great if there was some more programming in Pulaski Park. Right. Right. Yeah. Did, did that, did that, because I know that's sort of a combination of parks, parks and rec and mm -hmm. Arts Council, the responsibility for programming uh, Pulaski Park. No, we didn't talk about that, but mm -hmm. we did talk about pop-up events, which came up a bunch, and, and there's been a lot of discussion. He said that, um, the DNA is working on that. That's a little bit outside of his purview because it's working with you know empty spaces, so they have to deal with landlords and such. But <coughs> he did say that um, the Arts Council is actually working on a pop-up event. They did that one last month. The um, women's music thing in the little space by you know what I mean? Cracker Barrel. No. Right by Cracker. There's a store. There's an empty storefront. All right. They had a month. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're the yeah. 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 yeah, early winter or something. So anyway, he said they're doing a little bit of that, but the DNA is kind of overseeing that, that piece more. All right, so um, so we, we we'll put this on the agenda for next time to have more discussion and maybe talk maybe at the next meeting talk about inviting. If you think it would be useful, I mean, I'm happy. I don't. I there is more there in my notes, but I don't. I'd be fine if you want to set people up for the next meeting. Either way, it's fine with me. Either get it more directly from Brian or from my notes. Okay. Um, well, we are, we, I feel like we have carried over a few things at this meeting, so probably the next one's not the best time to invite people because we will have the taxi um, ordinance to go over. So, do we have a July meeting? Do it was August, didn't we decide not to do this one summer meeting? I think we did decide that. I can't remember which one. Maybe it was August that we skipped. Um, so we'll do that one. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we should just have the next meeting be the July meeting. Speaking of old fashioned print, my, 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 uh, my, I show a June 10th meeting for city services. City services, not. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, uh, not June 10th, you mean July 7th. 10th? July 17th is when I show. Pencil yes, July 17th, we have a meeting. Uh, 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 so it must be uh, August that we decided not yeah. to have. That's true. Do you remember, Cameron? No chance in that. I don't. I need so many dates of high fault. Oh, I see an August 21st one. Uh, so maybe so we, we, maybe we had considered canceling So we one, could, we could no. consider Can you go taking an August time? vacation? Yeah, maybe let's put that on the agenda yeah. for the next meeting yeah. to discuss. I might have a problem with that July. Do we know what, when is the city council meeting that month in July? Is it the? It is. It's 13th. Yeah. yeah. So I might have a problem with that. All right. Let's put it on the agenda to talk we'll about, talk about, about it again. the yeah. summer general okay. summer schedule. The next meeting. Um. Okay. So that brings us to number five. Can I briefly adjourn? Yes. Uh, right back. Absolutely. Yeah. See, you guys decided no August meeting. Okay. It says right here, no August meeting. Where do I have it in my calendar? Where, where do you have it in your uh on the city website. Oh, okay. So we have signed already. No August meeting. All right. It's so funny. I wonder why. And are we meeting regularly at five now? Or wasn't that way for a while? Because I think we went to five thirty because of me for a little while, but then I think we went back, which is fine now for me. Um. It. Uh, there's five. Hmm? Five, I think. Yeah. I think we're at five. Okay. Yes. So we have one on the 17th of July, but not in August. Okay. All right. Well, then we will tell Council Bidwell what happens, but we don't need to put that on the calendar. Um, and then, although if you want to talk about, you said the, Ju the July date might not work. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but I could invite parts people was the other thing I was that's why I was curious. Just keep it far away. Yeah. yeah. In July. Yeah. Wow, so we're the only committee that did that. that oh, why didn't we didn't do that in city services? We still can. <laughs> um, we had already <laughs> don't sound too desperate for anything. Did we? Okay. It says it on the city calendar apparently that we're not meeting on it. Well, where we'd argue with the city calendar. That's taken care of already. Okay. Okay, so um, number five continue discussion on op eds paying CSR. So there's a
a draft that everyone has in track changes. Yeah. So we're looking at the new one, not the old one, right? I sent around one uh, that had revisions. I dated it May 9th. Right, I think that's the one that came. And that's yes. the same one. Yes. Yes. And, 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 and I would just introduce this with the comment that um, I am by no means committed <laughs> to, to going forward with this op-ed. Oh, yeah. Um, there, there is an expectation at the, at the Gazette that we were going to do a series of three, but uh, you know, I don't think the Gazette's readership is out there waiting with bated breath for like they're installment their number two. Their papers uh, I don't think so. And I recognize that uh, it was a lot easier to get four people in agreement with the first one, which was just kind of a laying out of some facts and summaries of data, than, than it will likely be to agree on wording, um, you know, especially about uh, panhandling. Uh, to a certain extent, I would not be surprised if we, we, we discover a little bit uh, of that with the wage theft uh, matter as well. And so, I, I, you know, if, 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 if we can arrive at something that everybody feels comfortable with, great, but I'm not, I'm not, consider, I'm not gonna consider it a huge disappointment if we just don't get there. Um, and, I'm, I'm, and, I'm, and to put something out there that, um, you know, talks about there were actually three different opinions on this matter in our committee. There was this view, there was this view, there was this view. I'm not sure that makes a lot of sense either. So, mm -hmm. I'm, I, I, at, you know, I'm at, at, at your pleasure, however you want to. Um, well, with the first one, we went paragraph by paragraph. We certainly could do that unless, unless it's sort of already there's a feeling that that's not going to be fruitful and we're not going to kind of come to a place where we're all going to be able to sign off. Um, well, I, I didn't um, have a chance to look at the second one you sent, Dennis, but I do have suggested language for the places that I was, you know, the panhandling piece, for instance, that I was concerned about. So I don't think, I mean, it might not be acceptable to you, but I don't think it's, it has to be terribly difficult. At least from my looking at what I was thinking could maybe be shifted a little. Okay, should we give it a go? Just with the one, mm -hmm. I, I need to leave by 645. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Right. Um, We've got a that's this one. important oh, matter. Is there going to be any food at the Democratic? No. No? Oh my goodness. No pizza? You want to order right now? Yeah, exactly. Right. exactly. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> just, just thought I'd ask. Um, the last time we had 20 leftover party size pizzas. I know, I know. It went, I think, that yeah. Okay, so should we go paragraph by paragraph? Yes? Or is there, or, do, do you want to just skip, do you feel comfortable skipping? Well, well I did mine attract changes, so I can just tell you where I have things, but I don't want do other people. Okay. Great. Sure. And, and this is track changes from the original or from what I had said it around? It is from the original, so there's okay. going to be a little weird back and forth there if you've already made changes. Well, no, the one you sent around was dated May 9th. So. Right. Oh, but it didn't, ha I think it did have the track changes in it when I printed it. No, my track changes. Oh, oh okay. Just okay. my suggestions. Right. Well, part, part of the problem with track changes is Depends on what mode, which mode you have it in when you print it out. Whether it shows changes or yeah, you not. You have to show final markup or yeah. show with changes. So I printed it out and it, and it showed the you know what had been changed from an original. But but okay, for so example, yours does not. Reduced. You can much. figure it out by looking okay. over here. But so this should be. Uh, well. But well. Okay. So okay. Uh, do you do you. We go in paragraph by paragraph. Um, well, Councilor Klein was going to just go ahead and tell okay. her chance. Do you okay. think that'll be hard to do? 
We should so, just go through, yeah. start in the first paragraph. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the first thing is just a little technical thing, which is you said affects um, the downtowns of Northampton and Florence. Florence doesn't really call their center the downtown, so I would just say as it affects downtown Northampton and the center of Florence. Yeah. Because yeah. old ham people I know, don't appreciate right. having it called downtown. Maybe I'm wrong. Pan, maybe I'm, I'm, not wrong. I'm, I'm not a, I'm a, I'm a transplant. <laughs> um, then the next paragraph, another small little thing. Um, several and can I just point yeah. out in, in the first paragraph, by the way? Yeah. So if we're, because I'm sure Pam was, it's the city council's committee on community resources, so we'll, we'll, we'll get we'll, we'll, we'll get that right. And I had changed the word heard from learned a great deal last year about. So, just, okay. so I'm sorry, you were about to talk about the second paragraph. That's quite all right. Um, so I wanted to make a suggestion just about the. Um, several labor unions produced a great deal of testimony and I said particularly from restaurant and construction workers because I think otherwise it sounds like there are no other in right. the, um, sectors in which there's concern about wage theft and then the language that I think makes most sense I know you um, you changed it in your second one when I just looked at it but I would just suggest saying about their experiences with some local employers failing to comply with wage and labor laws. So that that way you're making it clear that it's their experiences and some I think is an important Okay, factor. about their experiences. With some local, local employers failing. Yes, that makes a lot of sense. And then I don't know if you made a change around this the next sentence, we also heard from many restaurant owners. I think many. I struck. I struck many. Okay, that's. I, I struck thought many. I might have remembered that yep. that was there. So that's it there. The next paragraph, I don't have anything. Then the paragraph that starts, our committee also heard a great deal about at-risk populations. I inserted at-risk and other populations. Okay. So, do you still have often found soliciting? because I would suggest some of whom solicit money from passers-by, partly because soliciting often means soliciting for sex. Mm. Yes, it's a loaded word, I agree. And I'm sorry, and uh, I about average populations. And others, some of whom solicit money from passers-by. Yeah. Um, and then, so where the little, the, the sticky kind of more values-based piece here for me started where you said right in the middle of the paragraph and we considered first amendment objections to any attempts to that whole thing i i felt like if you could create some language or we could agree on some language that's something like though the committee remains divided on how we'd like to examine how to be engaged with um Hand, hand, just something like that, that to me feels enough so that it's clear that we weren't, you know, it wasn't some unified so decision. If, you know, though, though the committee is not of one mind, or though, the, or though the committee is divided, you know, something, something to that effect, is that what you Yeah. And, and where, would, where would you suggest that go in this paragraph? Um, citizens at large. This, I mean, the language uninviting and sometimes hostile presence of aggressive panhandlers, that whole sentence to me is kind of um, inflammatory. So if there's some way that we could just get rid of the descriptors and say right after that semicolon, though the committee remains divided on how we'd like to da 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 da. Well, if, if as you say, the descriptors, if, we're just, if it were just about the presence of aggressive panhandling? Um, is that? I don't or know if aggressive? aggressive is necessary personally. Um, because then, again, we're yeah, doing this value I mean, judgment thing of who Right, you might want to take not. that aggressive out of there because that's, that's late. Well, because for some, it, for some of the folks who spoke, any panhandling is 
it is aggressive. Okay, so it was just about the presence of panhandlers, period, without, yeah. without the various descriptors along the way. Yeah, not hostile presence. Right, right. And, and then the, though the committee remains divided or swears to that effect, what, what, where, Councilor Klein, are you suggesting, is, would that be at the end of that? Though, I mean, in the end we called upon the mayor, is that, is that where you're suggesting? Before in the end. Right. Yes, exactly. So if we said, what's your, Though the committee is not of one mind, or though the committee is it an agreement? Though the committee, I said, remains divided on how we'd like to examine. Um, sorry, I have to make this smaller because we can't see my own track changes. Well, the, um, the committee remains divided on whether or not we'd like to examine how to be engaged with panhandling on city streets. Is what we said. What I said. And then that would be with a comma, and then say in the end. So let me. So, so that would be a clause. Yeah. Let me see if I got yeah. the other committee is n is not in agreement on. Well, how she said actually. Remains, remains divided. divided. Would you be comfortable? Uh, that that sounds a little harsher than I would like it to sound. Although, if you want, you know. Yeah, I mean, I was sort of. It is not in agreement. Is, yeah. That's a little softer way of divided saying. Divided feels more. Yeah, that's fine. Is not in agreement on how to, I'm sorry. I, for me, it's whether or not we'd like to examine how to be engaged with panhandling because for okay. me, it's not something that I wanted to address. So I'm not sure how you, you might want to say that, but that is, that's truest to kind of my experience with it. And let me read, read this back. So in the sentence after we've stricken the uninviting and hostile and aggressive words, the next sentence would be, though the committee is not in agreement on how to become engaged in the well, panhandling. Whether, I think it was actually whether, whether or, or not. In, 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 in how, in whether or how. Not how, whether or not, I think was, because that, that says okay. for some people they just didn't want to okay. engage in whether or not to become engaged in the panhandling issue. Whether or not we'd like to examine how to be engaged is what I wrote, but whatever makes sense to you there, as long as you get across that concept, I'm fine with what you want to. I, I don't know, I, I totally get your point. I'm just not sure we need to have, talk about examining how to become engaged, just how to become engaged. So though the committee is not in agreement on whether or not to become engaged in the panhandling issue, in the end we called upon. But see, that's that's problematic too because I don't call it the panhandling issue. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Uh, in 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 just this issue. Whether or issue? not to be engaged with panhandling on city streets. Right. Then you're not calling in, it an issue. In panhandling on city streets. Okay. Yeah. I got you. So I'm not denying that people are panhandling, I'm just denying the framing of that. The framing it as an issue. That act, action or activity. The, so though the committee is not in agreement on whether or how to become engaged. It's whether or not, because there's a difference. I, I, think, I think to say how presumes that uh, I, I think the, it's more accurate to say whether say or how? not. I thought, yeah. I thought that's what, okay, let me start over here. That's what I meant to say. Though the committee is not in agreement on whether or not to become engaged in panhandling on city streets, comma, in the end, et cetera. Is that getting closer to it? Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, not exactly what I'd like to well, see, but I want to meet you halfway there. On whether or not to become engaged in 
start to engage with panhandlers or something, or engage with panhandling. Just to shorten that a little bit there. Whether or not to engage with panhandling as an issue, you can say. To become yeah. engaged in panhandling as, as an, an issue. issue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, then that's okay. accurate. Yeah. That, that yes. seems to capture what. So the committee is not in agreement on whether or not to become engaged in panhandling as an issue, comma. Or with panhandling, I would say, because in panhandling sounds like we would actually panhandle ourselves. To engaged with panhandling as an issue, an interesting. comma. <laughs> in the end, we called upon the mayor to, and here I slightly change it, to convene a working group. That's what he's called it to address the needs and then I had, and then I added a sentence at the end of that paragraph that advisory group has now met twice and will continue its conversations in the months ahead comma with an with an aim of compassionate solutions I'm not sure that's how I'm in the, sounds like the final solution I know I know Com um, compassionate can we also maybe add a sentence now that we plan to make a recommendation to include um, somebody with lived experience as a panhandler or as, something like that. We think it would be valuable, maybe, or I know that's getting, you know, the mayor wants to. Yeah, I'm, I'd be a, I'd frankly rather communicate that recommendation to the mayor without putting him on the spot. In a, in a Gazette guest column <coughs> would be my, my own but the question, thought on that. Will you not communicate it to him before this goes up mm -hmm. and out? I can communicate it to him tomorrow, but I'm, I still have a, a bit of an uneasiness about positioning him in, you know, you know. Um, before he answers, that's me. But if it is a recommendation that we have agreed as a committee to make, there's no reason not to say that we've made it. That's what I would do. But if you feel like you can't do it, well, to be to be clear, this brings, takes us back to agenda items. I agreed to transmit the recommendation. I frankly don't agree that it would be in the best interest of of, of really moving this process forward to do that. Mm -hmm. I, I absolutely will transmit the recommendation, or any of you can do it yourselves. But but I, I will do that. But I'm 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 not comfortable with putting it in this, frankly. Um, I guess. I don't know. <coughs> Done with that paragraph then? Well, yeah. that last sentence, that advisory group has now had twice on continuous conversations and months ahead with an aim of compassionate approaches. I, I agree, solutions is not the word. Compassionate responses, compassionate. Proposals. I wouldn't say proposals. I think approaches is fine. Okay, approaches. So in the next paragraph, um, the only thing I, this is kind of one of those nitpicky things, but you said in the first sentence, music of all sorts, visual arts. So I was just thinking, what about theater, street art? So by naming a couple, we risk leaving out other Well, I had added, and theater. Oh, good. I, I, again, I, so it now reads music of all sorts, comma, visual and theater arts. Great. Um, I, yeah, I realized that was an omission. Um, um, and now, now this, this, this now I'm not quite sure where we want to go with this, given the, you know, where we act, where we actually stand in your conversations with Brian. And, um, 
I think that maybe we could just um, condense it all into one quick sentence saying, you know, we continue to, uh, you know, be in touch or something like that with the arts organizers, the arts council and arts organizers around the city to figure out how we can best um, support and hold up their work or something like that. So let me see if, if we would st stick with at the same time there's a widely held view that even more of this activity, accompanied by better coordinated promotional efforts, would bring even greater vitality to our downtown. That's that's okay, right? Are we agreed with that as a general sentiment? Yeah, I mean unless. But then would strike the. Or the, you know, the next sentence about urging them the, the next two sentences and say instead, Councillor Klein, you're saying someone, we are in contact with the Arts Council and other arts and events organizations as to how we can best support their yeah. efforts. Or something like we're committed to continuing to be in touch with them or something like that. gist of that. You want me to read it back? Sure. That we strike strike it as of the we urge the mayor's cooperation instead way. We are in contact with I guess we should say the Northampton Arts Council and other arts and events organizations regarding how we can best support their efforts. Actually, you had, or was there a, you had something slightly alternative you were suggesting. What, sorry? Well, we are in contact with the Northampton Arts Council and other arts and events organizations regarding how we can best support their efforts. I just said, um, maybe saying we are committed to, instead of all that stuff, the preamble part about um, we are in touch with them or whatever, just say we're committed to supporting them the best we can or whatever the rest of that language was. Okay. I mean, we could say something like, just because Brian very specifically talked about the advocacy piece, we could say and endeavor to conduct advocacy to the best of our ability to support the arts in our city, something like that. I don't think <coughs> people always even know what that means when you say conduct advocacy. But anyway, that would just address directly what Brian had asked for. Mm -hmm. Committed to supporting the Northampton Arts Council and other arts and events organizations and will advocate their agendas, advocate their what about provide advocacy to support them? endeavors okay we're committed to, well using so can you support twice in the same sense we, we are we are committed to the work of the arts council and other arts and events organizations and will provide advocacy to support their endeavors is that getting closer mm -hmm. 
Yeah. See, now I feel like we're getting into your wordsmithing here. Right. Well. You get what we're trying to do. Yeah, so. if that's close enough with a few words here and there as I come back to look at it. I think so. Okay. And then there's, and there's another paragraph. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this is kind of the catch-all paragraph, and I'm not sure if, if this is still this was originally written several months ago. The way I have it here with a couple of slight changes is other challenges and concerns were also aired, including lack of progress in bringing north-south commuter rail to the valley and downtown parking issues that may suggest the need to plan for additional structured parking in the future. Um, one of the big things we heard about was before they changed the downtown meters to two hours. So I wonder if we could actually kind of say that like, I don't know, something like uh, well, we, changes like the recent we're, change to two hours for downtown meters. Just where we, you know, we're, we're not that we're taking credit for no, it. But, <laughs> no. but we're, we're, we're pleased at the recent. Um, yeah, just because we heard that consistently right. from people that one from hour wasn't long enough. One hour to two hour downtown park. I have to say I love that. It's amazing. It's it does it's make so a big difference. It's so much easier to have a meal. That's all, yeah. Um, also to drive from the side. Okay. And then you know, the last paragraph was going to just sort of be a, a hint at, Go ahead. At, at number three, the gist of which was going to be, no matter what anybody thinks about downtown, it's clear that it's going to be better off to the extent that we're all involved in shaping its future in here are some ways. Right. That was going to be sort of the, the gist of the, of the third. Are you still feeling good about the third? <laughs> I th actually, I think I think the third I think the third would again be easy. Right. Yeah, this is the hard one. This is this is this is the tough one, and I and I I, I, I take back my pessimistic introduction to it all. You always work it out. Uh, no, I it's, uh, it's true. It's true. Um, we're close to. It. Yeah. So. Do you want me to read back anything? Do we do we or we do we have a more or less meeting of the mind subject to a picking of a few words here and there? Um, I'm comfortable with it because we can wait and see. Um, I think the sense, but I think so. Um, now the only challenge is when you're reading my notes to myself, but I think I'm pretty much got it. I can. I don't know if it's helpful because we changed what I. But I can send my track changes to send out to us. I mean, it might help a little bit, even though we didn't stick to exactly. You can sure, sure. And then, yeah, that's, that's all. That's all. Confusing. That's all in keeping. Well, I, I think. I think at this point, I think I kind of got it down, but I can use that as confirmation. I kind of got the gist. Um, so Councilor Carney, are you comfortable with what we have now? And yes. Do you feel like, okay. Any part that you need or want read back or? No. No? Okay. Good. So, we don't need a motion or something on this, right? No. No. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you for doing this. Thank, thank sure. you. This is a lot of work and yeah. a lot of revision, a lot more work over a long period of time. Thank well, you. it's been spread out over a period of time, but I think. I think that makes it more work, um, less work. Well, maybe so. <laughs> it's just less no, concentrated. No, no, I, 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 I agree. I appreciate your, appreciate your thanks, and we'll um, get a, another, get this next version off to uh, the Gazette. And I look forward to it. And, uh, yes. Anticipate. Well, who knows? There could be a little more reaction to this one. Yeah.
Um, I mean, there's, there's sort of news that is being broken by this, I think, this one that people don't necessarily know about. Yeah, and, and, and just so you know, I did I did run past the mayor the fact that uh, this committee was expected to come forward with a guest column that would, in a general way, talk about the work of this advisory group. He said, okay, he's, he's, he's fine with that. He wouldn't want, you know, specifics and names mentioned at all. Okay. Um, does anyone have any new business? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much.